Hi, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and in this astronomy video, I want to go over the moons of the solar system. With over 200 moons in the solar system, there's a lot to talk about. Let's just take a look at some of the highlights. Mercury and Venus have no moons, so the first moon in the solar system belongs to planet Earth. Of course, the moon is particularly interesting when it slides into the Earth's shadow and we have a lunar eclipse or when the moon passes in front of the sun and we're treated to a spectacular total solar eclipse. The moon also has the distinction of being the only other world that humans have visited. Six Apollo missions in the 1960s and 70s sent astronauts to visit the moon. Hopefully, astronauts from planet Earth will be back in the very near future. If you'd like to know more about our moon, I'd encourage you to watch some of the other videos on this YouTube channel. On to Mars. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Discovered in 1877, Phobos is only 25 kilometers in diameter, Deimos quite a bit smaller at only 15 kilometers in diameter. One of the unique things about Phobos is it orbits only 6,000 kilometers above the surface of Mars, making it complete one orbit every seven and a half hours. Its orbit is also degenerative, which means that sometime between 30 and 50 million years from now, Phobos will likely crash into Mars. That will be a spectacular day, but I hope humans are not on Mars to see it. Let's go deeper into the solar system. Between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter is the asteroid belt, with thousands of objects. We know that few of these asteroids have their own moons. The Galileo spacecraft on its way to Jupiter was flying past Ida. As it photographed this small asteroid, only 60 kilometers long, we realized that Ida has a small moon named Dactyl. Dactyl is only 1.6 kilometers across. On to the Jupiter system. Truly the king of planets, it's also the king of moons, with 79 known moons, most of which are icy and rocky bodies. Let's take a look at a few of these specifically. Amalthea is one of Jupiter's innermost moons. At 250 kilometers long and 150 kilometers wide, it's very lopsided. It orbits just outside of Jupiter's rings. On to some of the larger ones, Callisto and Ganymede. Callisto is nearly the same size as Mercury at 4,800 kilometers across. It's made out of rock and ice, and there is no evidence of any activity on its surface. It's usually considered one of the oldest surfaces in the solar system. Ganymede, on the other hand, is the largest of them all, the largest moon of Jupiter and the largest in the solar system. In fact, it's the ninth largest object in the entire solar system. Ganymede is one of the few moons with a known magnetic field, leading us to believe that it has a liquid iron core. There may also be the evidence of cryovolcanism, or ice volcanoes, on the surface of Ganymede. The moon Europa is truly unique. At 3,138 kilometers in diameter, it's a little smaller than our moon. It's known to be the smoothest object in the solar system. Why is it so smooth? Europa has active tectonics on its surface. Rather than lava volcanoes, there are cryovolcanoes and cryogeysers. We can see here a very broken surface where icebergs have broken and refrozen into place. Because of detailed studies, we know that underneath Europa's icy surface, there's an ocean that is nearly 100 kilometers thick. Because of its vast oceans of water, Europa tops the list of places to look for life. Although visiting is not high on my priority list, Europa lies within Jupiter's radiation belt. Radiation dose would be sufficient to kill a human being with only one day's exposure. On to the innermost of Jupiter's four major moons, we find Io. This false color image taken in March of 1979 was really puzzling to scientists. At first, that blue object was thought it might be another moon emerging from behind the horizon. Once we got higher resolution and better color images of Io, we were truly stunned. Io looks like a giant moldy cheese pizza. What causes these wild colors? Chemical analysis tells at least these colors are due to various forms of sulfur-bearing minerals. One of the other truly surprising things about Io was how the surface changes. Do you see the red ring around the one gray spot in the image on the left? Notice how it changed in the image on the right. We now know that many of these dark spots are active volcanoes. Io has over 400 active volcanoes on its surface. 
As satellites have flown by, not only have we seen enormous mountains, we've also seen some of the volcanoes erupting. This particular eruption is sending a plume of material more than 500 kilometers above the surface of the small moon. In these images, we can see active lava flows in the Tavashtar region of the moon. Why are there so many active volcanoes and lava flows? Because of gravitational interactions between Jupiter and the two large moons, Europa and Ganymede, the land surface on Io flexes as much as 100 meters as it orbits around the planet. With 62 known moons, Saturn is another giant in the solar system. Let's take a look at a few of Saturn's moons. Here we can see Dione, Tethys, and Rhea. All of these are large ice balls. Tethys has among the lowest density of any of the moons anywhere in the solar system. Rhea is among the smoother objects. All of these moons are composed largely of water ice. As mentioned in the video about Jovian planets, rings are a common feature of the outer planets. And along with the rings, we find shepherd moons, moons that orbit in gaps in the rings or orbit just outside the rings, keeping many of the smaller ring particles in line. In the picture on the right, we can see waves caused by the gravitational attraction of this one small moon. Here we can see a collection of a few of the shepherd moons, including Pan, Atlas, and Pandora. Epimetheus and Janus are also interesting because they occupy the same orbit as they travel around Saturn. Of these shepherd moons, the one I find the most interesting is Pan. At only 35 kilometers across, it looks like a, well, I'm not sure exactly what it looks like. That ridge around the center is likely material that this small moon has collected as it has orbited within the rings. If you're looking for strange objects in the solar system, Hyperion might be your favorite. This strange moon was one of the first non-round moons to be discovered. At 300 kilometers along, it's also extremely low density. So low density, we believe it may be a rubble pile rather than a solid object. On to Mimas, this small moon of Saturn is only around 400 kilometers in diameter. A unique thing about Mimas was this enormous crater. Any of you science fiction fans may right away recognize that this looks very similar to the Death Star. This small moon was not photographed with any kind of precision until 1980, but Star Wars came out in 1977. So what do you think those scientists thought when they first photographed this small moon? Sometimes artists copy nature, but in this case, did nature take some notes from science fiction? At 1,492 kilometers across, Iapetus also is one of the strange ones. One side of Iapetus is nearly pure white, as white as snow, but the other side, the side that leads as Iapetus orbits around Saturn, is nearly pitch black. Besides gathering dark material on its orbit around Saturn, Iapetus also has this odd mountain ridge that extends much of the way around the small moon. Of notable moons, Titan is Saturn's most unique and most interesting. The second largest moon in the solar system, it is 5,148 kilometers in diameter. It's the only moon to have a significant atmosphere. Its atmosphere is rich in nitrogen with some significant amounts of chemicals like methane and ethane, leading us to think that its atmosphere is similar to ancient Earth's atmosphere. Using infrared, we have been able to peer below the thick clouds of Titan and see some interesting surface features. Titan also holds the record as being the only other moon that we have landed a spacecraft onto the surface. Here's an image taken by the Huygens probe that dropped from the Cassini spacecraft and actually landed and operated for a few hours on the surface of Titan. On the Huygens probe descent and further studies have revealed these interesting branching like, well, they look like river patterns on the surface of Titan. These dark features look like lakes. In fact, Titan is the only other world with a known liquid cycle. There's rain, there's rivers, there's lakes and clouds, but rather than liquid water, the rain, rivers, and lakes are made out of liquid methane. When it comes to moons of Saturn, Enceladus is my favorite. It's a highly reflective body. In fact, it's the whitest object in the solar system, reflecting more than 99% of the sunlight that hits it. It's as white as fresh fallen snow. You can see there are some areas that are cratered. Other areas have these unique blue tiger stripes. What causes these stripes and the areas with no craters? Well, cryovolcanism. Here we have another moon with a geologically active surface. 
When the Cassini spacecraft flew past Enceladus and looked back towards the center of the solar system, we could see geysers shooting ice and water nearly 500 kilometers above the surface of this small moon. In the image on the upper right, we can see some of the active geysers emerging from some of the cracks on Enceladus. And in the image on the left, we can see Enceladus orbiting within the E-ring of Saturn. Eruptions from these geysers supply ice particles to Saturn's rings. On to Uranus. Uranus has 27 known moons, all of which are named after characters in Shakespeare's plays. You may recognize Puck and Miranda, Titania and Oberon. Puck is quite small at only 162 kilometers across. Oberon is more than 1,500 kilometers across. All of these are rocky, icy bodies. We don't have many photographs of Uranus moons because Voyager only flew past once back in the 1980s. Umbriel is sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum from Saturn's Enceladus because Umbriel is one of the darkest objects in the solar system. While we don't have good photographs of most of Uranus's moons, we do have some pretty good photographs of the small moon Miranda. At only 480 kilometers across, something happened to Miranda. Large cracks and wrinkles dominate its surface. It must have experienced violent tectonic activity or possibly even a large collision sometime in its past. On to the last of the planets, we find Neptune. Neptune has 14 moons, one large one, Triton, that you can see at the bottom of this image. We do have a few good images of a Triton from the Voyager flyby. Here we can see a unique and rather colorful gibbous view of Triton. Notice the wrinkled area in the upper left is known as the cantaloupe terrain. The area in the bottom center is dominated by cryovolcanism once again. With careful inspection, we have been able to identify that Triton has a very thin atmosphere with thin nitrogen clouds. In the image on the right, we also can see evidence of geysers. The cryogeysers that erupt from Triton's icy surface actually erupt with liquid nitrogen. Another unique thing about Triton is that it is a retrograde moon. It orbits in the opposite direction. This leads us to believe that Triton likely was a Kuiper Belt object that passed too close to Neptune and fell into Neptune's orbit. It too has a degenerative orbit, and so one day, millions of years from now, Triton will break apart as it gets too close to Neptune in its orbit. That leads us to Pluto and Charon. While Pluto may be classified as a dwarf planet, it may be best classified as a binary dwarf planet, with Pluto and Charon together. For all solar system objects, these truly are unique, because Charon is more than half the diameter of Pluto. The comparative large sizes of these two objects cause them to be tidally locked. The same face of Pluto always faces Charon, and the same face of Charon always faces Pluto. Pluto also has four other small moons, Hydra, Nix, Styx, and Kerberos. Kerberos is only 7 kilometers across, where Hydra is 55 kilometers across. Are there moons past Pluto? Well, certainly there are. A number of the other Kuiper Belt objects that have been discovered also have been discovered to have moons. The largest Kuiper Belt object, Eris, has a small moon, Dysnomia. Makemake also is known to have a moon, and Haumea has at least two. It's likely the more objects we discover, the more moons we will find. And the more moons we explore, the more unique and strange objects we'll continue to find. Thanks for watching, and I hope you join me again on another astronomy or earth science video.